Okay, today I will discuss a little different subject. Okay, well, you don't have to write down. You just enjoy some uh, slide, and it is about the biomechanics. Okay, especially your spines. <coughs> spine. You know what I mean? Spine. Yeah. From here to there. And I will introduce some a little bit about the spines and also introduce you about the artificial disc. The artificial disc means that you have a 24 different numbers. And if we is there anybody who suffers, ever suffers from back pain here or back? Pains. Anybody experience those pains? Raise your hands. Yeah, okay. See, you are very young, but almost half of you have experienced back pains. So back pains are very severe pains, and very uh, you have to be careful and you, you need to understand what cause the back pains okay and not just to you but also to uh, your parents and your uh, family you have to uh, let them know what caused the uh, uh, spine related pains is really important to to understand okay and the reason I uh, why I want to introduce this pain is that this all the pains is uh, related to uh, mechanics okay what's that about mechanics mechanics there are three principles force material and deformation right force applied to a materials so material has some material properties and it deforms right so force and material and deformation keep that in mind those are three concepts, and those are three concepts are equally, equally applied to not just structures, not just to a component, but also to your body. Okay, your body, especially spines, because the spines always support most of the load. Whenever you lift some heavy weight, okay, when you lift a heavy weight, your back support all the moment you know there is a weight there and when you lift up then with respect to this back there is a moment arm from here to there is a distance and there is a weight so weight times this distance will cause the moment at your back right so all uh, to your back the moment how much moment it caused uh, in your uh, back and neck is is the uh, the one causing, I mean potentially causing pains. So how to reduce the moment? When you lift a heavy weight, you have to get the closer as much as possible. Okay, to reduce the arm length, you have to approach to that weight and then lift up. That way you can reduce the moment okay very very simple but very important you know whenever you just uh, want to lift something you don't pay attention to whether you lift up this way whether you are uh, but uh, again you have to understand the the uh, bending moment which apply to your back okay and uh, When I was, uh, it was a 1997, okay, 1997, which was about 15 years ago. Uh, that I'm 52 years old now, so uh, it was about uh, late 30. I was very young that time, and I worked uh, really hard, and uh, day and night time. I enjoy the work. I enjoy programming. I enjoy uh, 
uh, working, uh, especially in front of a, a computer and, and so on. And I had to travel a lot, you know, going back and forth, United States and Europe and all, uh, all around the uh, world. And suddenly, on the way back to, to Seoul, in the airport and in the flight, in the flight, I felt real severe uh, neck pain. The neck pain here. I could not even move plane. Uh, so uh, right after arrival and the e at airport, I didn't go home. I just directly went to hospital. So uh, I and that doctor, the neurosurgeon, okay, neurosurgeon, doctor got the, all the CT scan and then told me that I have to get immediate surgery. Is a back pain, back there the uh, disc, you know, each vertebra there is a disc. Disc ruptured, and that ruptured disc is the uh, pinched the nerve. I will show that uh, that spine uh, anatomy. But anyhow, doctor told me uh, I need a, a urgent uh, surgery, and you know I was uh, scared. It was my neck, right? And I asked him how he would do a surgery perform uh, surgery, operate. And he explained he will cut my neck from backside and opens up and then uh, do some things. I forgot, I, I forgot what he, he was going to do that. But anyhow, from backside. And I was really scared. And he said <clears throat> it is a very new uh, new way, new, uh, but he developed that way, and, and et cetera, and, and so on and so on. So anyhow, that was, uh, you know, uh, right after airplane, I didn't plan to, to go to that air hospital. So I reserved a hospital in Hanyang University, and then uh, about, it was about one week after, and doctor at Hanyang University was uh, explaining uh, he also told me I need, a, I need to have a immediate surgery. All the disc has a ruptured. And I asked him about how he's going to do a surgery. And he said he will cut this way, not from backside. He said he will cut this way and opens up and then do some surgery. And I told him, first the doctor, he explained this way. How come you explain this way? And the second doctor told me, that's the wrong way. You know, you, we cannot do, uh, I mean, nobody should not do, you know, from backside. I noticed that even doctors, they have a different opinions. And I cannot believe in nobody. So I decided to, to, to uh, study myself what caused the pains in my spine, in my neck. So from that time on, I started to study about spine anatomy. Uh, at the same time, I exercise every day, uh, uh, strengthen my muscles, and so pain has a little decreased. Anyhow, I started to study, and I noticed a very interesting feature of the, about the uh, spines.
Well, this slide was prepared my, myself in 2003. It was a long time ago. I prepared th this slide. You know, I had uh, that uh, pain in uh, 1997, and then uh, I started. Anyhow, I just want to uh, show the... not this one. <clears throat> I want to show uh, whole spine. Okay, this looks better. Okay, this is the spines and we have each one called vertebra. Okay, vertebra. And between them, we call intervertebral disc. See here, disc. So we have a, a five pieces for the uh, cervical. Cervical means the neck, and and twelve and uh, and and, and uh, five of your uh, lumbar. So each vertebra, you have a disc. Okay, disc, and what? Uh, actually, what it does is the like uh, uh, cushions, and if you uh, lift some weight while you running, the all the impact is observed by these cushions, and this disc, whenever you have a severe uh, uh, weight or moment, then this is compressed, and this one is the. Uh, uh, actually, th this is consists of two parts mainly. This is the called annulus. Okay, annulus means that is all uh, consists of fibers, and this is the uh, jelly, jelly like uh, liquid. So whenever it compressed, it's like a tire, or automobile tire. Whenever pressure, pressure, and this liquid is expand, and this. Uh, annulus holding pressure. That's the how it supports a all uh, compress and moment. So anyhow, this disc under too much pressure and this nucleus, this uh, annulus is uh, ruptured, failed, and then this is comes out, comes out, and this is the old nerve from your brain all the way to, to, to uh, your arms and you here you goes neck so this is the old the nervous system going through uh, to to the old body but anyhow this any rupture disc will pinch the nerve and which cause the pain okay so uh, uh, these old disc uh, work very similarly so anyhow my neck uh, it was a C Four and C five. C C means cervical, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I'm a five. So C four and five has a rupture, and uh, I studied myself. And what I noticed, what was it most interesting, was that this annulus and this uh, nucleus. Our lab, our major is studying about fiber, right? Our lab is the all uh, studying and doing research uh, related to uh, fiber reinforced the composites. Composite consists of all the fibers, graphite fiber, glass fiber, all, all, all uh, those kind of fibers. And as you can see here, this is the uh, disc, and this is the nucleus, and this is the annulus, and as you can see, all the angles fiber angles. And those fiber angles are optimized, optimally designed to 
best support all kinds of load, compressions and bending, lateral bending and <coughs> twisting and so on. So at that time, I was really amazed and uh, excited to, to uh, understand how these structures design, I should not say design, but it, it, to me it, it is like optimally designed. So that time, uh, 1998 and nine, uh, 99 and 2000, my two master degree uh, students, I, I, I gave them uh, this topic as their uh, master thesis and they finished and I submit a uh, paper, journal paper to uh, 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 mechanical engineering, Korean mechanical engineering. And uh, we propose the artificial disk, which really works like natural disk and looks like natural disk. We can simply use the artificial fiber and inside some plastic in there and then we design. And, and we submit the paper. And then 2001, okay, 2001, I went to uh, Stanford as a visiting scholar for one year. At that time, it was my sabbatical year. So I, I decided to go to uh, Stanford. And then uh, I thought I can have uh, some good time with my family for one year. So when I arrived at Stanford, <laughs> And I need a car, right? I need a car. So I just uh, shopped for a car. And I found a, a an, uh, used car uh, parked on the street and just nearby Stanford University. And I called the owner. And then uh, we met and we exchanged a little bit of uh, uh, interest. And he is the employee of Stanford Medical School. And I told them, I was very glad to, to see a person on medical uh, field. So I told them, I'm interested in developing artificial disk. And then he introduced a Korean medical doctor who works in Stanford Medical School. He's a very good neurosurgeon. And we met together. And I told them I'm very much interested in making artificial disk. And he, his name is Daniel Kim. Daniel Kim is also told me that he, he, he uh, wanted to work with an engineer like me. So from that time on, we worked together and we worked very hard. We really enjoyed developing artificial disk. At that time, there was a disk called ProDisk. This is the pro disk, and as you can see here, this is the artificial disk. And instead of that, you know, uh, uh, ruptured disk, you just get rid of the disk, clean them out, and then put this inside into into instead of this in, uh, intervertebral disk. So anyhow, how it works? Well, it just simply ball and socket. See, you see the ball, and at the top, it works like a, we call ball and socket, right? In a mechanical, we call it ball and socket. So uh, this is the pro disk. This is the only, there was uh, another disk called Charité, and which works very similar to this one. But at that time, this is the only 
artificial disk, not commercially available, but it was on the test. It was a 2001 Pro Disk. And we start to develop quite different disk, which is called M6. This one, it stands for motion six. Motion six means, you know, the six forces, six degree of freedom, X, Y, Z, and and each direction you have another uh, 60 uh, rotation. So inside is exactly same as natural disk. It has a fibers and core and, and so on. So anyhow, the pro disk, pro disk, this company was a very small company at that time. And 2000, and we we uh, found a company. Okay, we me and uh, Daniel Kim and I uh, we included two other uh, professors, and we we formed a uh, a company. At that time, the initial company called Ultra Ultra uh, Kinetics. Now uh, the name has changed to Spinal Kinetics. But anyhow, the Small company who developed this one was bought by bigger company. You know how much they pay. You know, you know the uh, a company buy another company, right? By paying money, they pay three hundred million dollars. Three hundred million dollars. At that time, we were really excited, and then uh, we had a hope that uh, we can do uh, as we can do better than them. So anyhow, anyhow, uh, we enjoyed working. Uh, we we developed this artificial disk, and it took uh, three years, starting from two thousand one. And uh, one year I went, I was there. I'm supposed to have a good time with the family, but well, unfortunately to my family, I had to work and they have to, uh, they were uh, uh, mad. Anyhow, I spent one time full time there and another two years and, and I uh, had to come to Hanyang University. That was uh, 2004. And company, we hired a, a CEO, uh, his name is Tom, we hired him and then he did a very good job. And you know, to company as a starting company, we have to raise money from outside. We have to get the investment from outside, right? And he successfully he raised a lot of money, $30 million and another $30 million and company got very big. And then, uh, this, okay, this is the uh, M6, our spinal disc. And in United States, it takes about seven or eight years to get FDA approval. You know FDA? Each country has a, a different rules to get the, to get the uh, commercialized, I mean, commercialized your medical device. Medical device is extremely uh, difficult and extremely, uh, uh, you know, it takes a lot of time. Anyhow, it's a still in uh, FDA approval, but in Europe, the period is very short and this M6 become number one in Europe. And this one was the only one uh, selling in, in uh, Europe, but ours become number one. And there is the company, you know, big company is called Thinsense, 
who bought this company, small company, they pay uh, 300 million dollars, they bought this company, and Thinsys sue us. You know sue? S-U-E? Because of the patent. They had, Thinsys had another artificial desk disk which is uh, similar to ours and they submit the patent 2003 April we submit the patent 2003 August four months late okay we are four months late and so uh, the court is uh, still going on the court is uh, still going on, and it takes a lot of time and money. And uh, but we studied in United States. It, it is very important that who started research first. So last week, I have to go to that court as a witness and explain to, to a, a judge and, and jury, and we are the one studied research, 1999. And really, fortunately, we published a paper describing all the artificial disk. And, and uh, what kind of decision will be made, we don't know yet, but I brought this disk and, and take a look at it. Don't open it up, okay? You just, you can see from outside. And the court is still going on. The thing says, sue spinal kinetics over artificial disk. They sue us 2008. It was uh, three years ago. But it takes so long, three years, collecting all the information. And this week, I mean, this month is the last final trial. And they will make a final decision in 10 days. And we are really... Uh, anxious and excited and if you interested in read these all the articles about the our uh, trial case coming so slow Okay, so uh, uh, in the United States, the, they have a, they, uh, a court is quite different from uh, Korean, and they have a, a jury, nine persons, randomly selected, and who do not have any knowledge and experience on the spines and spinal disc and so on, and we have to explain to them, and uh, they, are, they are the one, uh, ones who, who decide. And I am sure and I, we hope that we will win. But anyhow, I, I would like to uh, introduce biomechanical analysis of intervertebral disc using finite element method. You know what that means, finite element method? That is the uh, uh, method, numerical analysis method, and um, 
usually when we calculate the stress and deformation, we can certainly do, uh, do it by hand. But if the structure gets uh, complicated, we have to use a more uh, advanced uh, tools like uh, FEMs. Anyhow, this intervertebral disc is subject to a six different forces, compression, axial torsion, and lateral bending, and flexion and extensions. Okay, all the moment and forces you are learning in, in this class. Now, this disc on the compressions, and as I explained, this core expand. And this expanded pressure is supported by these annulars. If there is only compression, the annulus, uh, the fiber angle would be zero degree to better support. But this one does not support only compression, but also a torsion and bending. If the, there's a torsion applied, the best angle of this fiber will be 45. Remember that Mohr circle? 45 will be the best. So considering compression, torsion, bending, and all kinds of things, these angles, these angles is the, as you can see, optimally designed around 30 degrees. And that angles is changing in, in this direction and changing from layer to layers. So we developed, we can develop a finite element method to better simulate these annulars and instead of just uh, coaxial, coaxial uh, cable element, uh, we were working on developing new element and we present equations better describe this old geometry, not only in tech natural disk, but also to describe artificial disk. This equation was published 1999 uh, our paper. Okay. And showing all the fibers like that. And okay. This is the uh, CT or MRI scan. When you have uh, some, uh, uh, well, CT, MRI is give us the more resolutions. Uh, when you scan, we have a scan by one millimeter, uh, uh, by one millimeter, one millimeter, uh, the gap, the distance will be one millimeter. Anyhow, we have a, a thousands of, uh, uh, film cutting this, 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 and many slides, and that is called uh, CT scan data, and we combine them. We combine them, and we generate geometry, connecting all the nodes, and we ge generate geometry, and then we can import into a computer model using CAD program. That's how we got the old geometry. And disk model, which was the, from these equations, because the disk, uh, disk model is very soft. It cannot be uh, scanned through MRI uh, CT. So we have to have uh, this uh, uh, separate model. And this is, the from, uh, is a bone. A bone can be easily uh, detected. So anyhow, we combine them, we construct a uh, computer model, and we apply uh, many different load. Axial compression, 200 Newton, and flexion is a flexion is a bending, okay? Uh, this is a medical terminology. Uh, bending, 7.5 Newton meter, meters, and as you can see here, uh, we, ROM is the uh, range of motion. So under this axial compression, compression, how much the uh, 
uh, millimeter, how much millimeter we, we can uh, cal we, uh, calculate. And as you can see here, the uh, annulus consists of many different layers. So like this, one, two, three, four, five, six. And each layer has a different stress distributions. You know, bar misses stress. And this is the, uh, so as you can see here, inner layer, middle layer, outer layer, any, any location you want to see. And this is the uh, multiple lumbar, you know, the multiple lumbar L, L1, L2. L, L is starting from here. L1, 2, 3, 4, 5. L1, L1 and 1, 2, and 2 and 3, and 3 and 4, and 4 and 5. So we have intervertebral disc like that, and then we apply load. This is always a backside. Okay? Mm -hmm. When you touch your back, you can feel some, uh, uh, some node, right? Some uh, hard part. That is this part in, in your back. And all the uh, uh, nerve is going this way. So anyhow, if you, you can bend like that or bend like that, and you can see the deformations. So as I said in um, solid mechanics, here is the geometry, here is the load, and here is the material properties, and you can get the deformations. So anyhow, in this study, when you apply load, you can see how much uh, deformation it has. And at the same time, how much stress you can have in each uh, intervertebral disc. This is the natural disc. Okay, This is a natural disc. And now, we can have artificial disc. This is a little different style. We, we call nucle nucleus replacement, PDN. Uh, so what, what we do is we get rid of the inner core and then put into uh, inside. And this is a little different uh, procedure. And this is the uh, PDN. Uh, two pieces, put it in there. This is the uh, made of hydrogen, meaning that it absorbs water and it expands. It's like a material under high temperature, it expands, right? And this is a very much similar to that, but instead of temperature, it absorbs water and expands, such that you can have enough space between two vertebra. So that's how it works. And all the uh, FPM analysis. And this is the uh, um, the uh, a artificial disc made of polyurethane. PU, we just call it polyurethane PU, and this is the uh, annulus fiber. Fiber is mostly made of UHMWPE, ultra high molecular weight P polyethylene, PE. UHMWPE, just PE, polyethylene. Uh, polymers is a polymers in and fibers, and we put it into here. Or, we, this is the what? This is the, uh, you know, pro disc, and we can uh, compare which one is good. So this is called ball and socket joint, and this is the composite type, and which we developed. And uh, we can see the, all the comparison. I don't want to go through these all, all things, but I want to emphasize that what, uh, what you have learned in uh, mechanics of solid can be 
used to design not just for the automobile, not just uh, aerospace structure, but also uh, all the medical device. Okay? So medical, uh, biomechanical mechanics field is very interesting and very uh, promising. So if you're interested in, plan to study more in your uh, graduate study. So anyhow, this is the uh, M6. M we have a two different types. MCL, L is a lumbar for your back. And M6C is a uh, cervical. The one you, uh, where is it? Where is the sample? And as you can see, there is the fibers. And that was the first ever type for the artificial disk. And um, that is the, uh, here as you can see, See all, all six component of uh, displacement, six degree of freedom, and natural disk. And look here, this is the core, and this is the fiber surrounding core and top and bottom plate, and then uh, we put them together, and it, it works like a natural disc. Under compression, it expands, and bending, and torsion, and so on. And the, we have a fixation at the top, we have, which we call keels. So these keels will put into a vertebra, bones. I can show you that. Uh, so it, it consists of artificial nucleus and annulus and sh uh, sheet. Sheet means that protecting debris from outside. And the fixations, oh, there is some movie here. This is a core, okay? Artificial polymer nucleus core. And this is a top plate where we wind the fibers going up and down, up and down, fibers. And then put them together. And then we wind the fibers. We wind the fibers. We had a, you know, tens of different types. And this is how we wind. So artificial fiber annulus and six degree of freedom, shears and torsions and all kinds of load. And polymer uh, sheet and titanium end plate. Titanium is the only metal who is, which is biocompatible, okay? And this is for the US Obiker. And uh, if you really interested in um, developing art, uh, medical device, it is very much interesting and as a 
mechanical engineer like yourself, uh, you can do a, a lot of things. And, but you need, a, you need to understand solely mechanics. This is a, a vertebra and intervertebra disc. You can see a little better. And this is the uh, normal uh, vertebra, and this is a disc, and this is the, your uh, backside. Okay? Your backside and all the uh, veins and blood circulations, and this is the, all the uh, nerve, nerve coming from uh, uh, top to bottom. And all kinds of load. And as you can see here, herniated disc is the nucleus. These annulars are ruptured, and this uh, uh, nucleus is uh, pinching your nerve, and that causes the pains. And you can see here, this is the whole nervous system. This is the main uh, nerve from uh, running from your brain to, to bottom. And each segment, you have uh, another uh, nerves coming to your uh, arms and, and so on. And there is another surgery called fusion, interbody fusion. Fusion means that when you have the disease, or rupture disc, uh, you can you get rid of this all the uh, uh, disc, and then you just uh, lift a little bit up, and you put into uh, some uh, device which fuse fuse those two in, uh, vertebras, just um, uh, fuse them. And, but this one, these two vertebra cannot move with each other. There is another called decompression and bone fusion. You can do a lot of a choice for your back pain, but uh, this artificial disc is the, uh, for the uh, total disc replacement. And this is the charité, uh, uh, which is very similar to a, a pro disc. And this was the uh, PDN, it made of hydrogel. It absorb water and expand. Yeah, it shows the uh, honeyate disc. Okay, it shows the honeyate disc, and then. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm telling you, whenever you use some pains, okay, you pains, and this one trying, uh, is tending to uh, uh, pinch your nerve. So whenever you feel some pains, and you need to, uh, as you can see here, this uh, annulus has uh, some uh, rupture, fracture is, is going on, and then, and finally, he, the, uh, this disc is comes out of the uh, uh, disc, and when uh, we can do a lot of biomechanical tests using uh, MTS machines and using uh, same measuring system as a mechanical test. This is the uh, extensometer to measure the distance or strains. And we have to do uh, millions of uh, cycles. When we d develop medical device, we have to uh, pass a lot of uh, uh, tests. OK, anyhow, uh, I just want to go uh, quickly review the uh, mechanics of the uh, spines. And I hope that you, if you're interested, 
come and see me. I can explain more about the spines. Where is that stuff? Where is the disk? Okay, you will, you will uh, get information about the final decision in, uh, within uh, two weeks from internet and I hope that we will win. Further class and okay, we have a little time left and anybody has some, any question on quiz you had last week? So anyhow, uh, as an engineer, I, I'm glad we, I had a back pain and which uh, gave me a chance to uh, develop a, an uh, artificial disk. And uh, my hope is that uh, many patients got a benefit from that artificial disk and uh, all over the world. And, uh, we can certainly improve better uh, device. Uh, speaking of the medical device, uh, I worked on the developing hip stem, you know, hip joint here. This is the longest bone in your body from uh, your hip and your leg is connected by real ball and socket joint. This one, you can see? This is the uh, leg, and this is your hip, and there is the uh, hip joint. See, as you can see here, this is your hip and your leg. And when you get uh, older and some, uh, you can have some disease. And uh, here, uh, this bone is got, um, you have to remove the bones. So once you remove that joint and this is the real bone and you just cut them out and you put into this long artificial stem inside and this artificial uh, stem can have a bowl at the, at the top and we put this socket, uh, socket into your hip and then that uh, works like a uh, ball and socket uh, joint. It is like that. And this stem, I mean artificial disc, used to be made of titanium. But uh, this also can be made of a composite material. Composite material, especially carbon fiber or graphite fibers are biocompatible. So you can put it into your body without any uh, bad reactions. So even for this artificial hip stem, uh, there are surgery, like millions of cases every year. Well, as you can see here, there are many, many different patents. If you have some idea, you got patent, okay? You submit patent and uh, someday they can, uh, your patent can be uh, commercialized and you can be rich.
right? It does not come out. So even for not only spine, but also hip and all the arms is all uh, the principle of this deformation and motions is uh, uh, much related to uh, mechanics. Okay, so uh, today I want to emphasize that what you are learning in solid mechanics can be used to uh, design any, many uh, medical device. And not just for the, this uh, artificial uh, prosthesis, but also for uh, develop for uh, uh, some, um, you know, hearing aid. You understand the, your ears. You know, it has a lot of uh, vibrations due to air pressure and understanding all the mechanics, vibrations, and you can develop a uh, hearing aid, uh, another uh, medical device. And you name it, there are many, many different types and, and kinds of uh, medical device you can uh, uh, design. And it's called biomechanics, and very interesting and very promising. Okay, so uh, this will complete my lecture today.